Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. In today's episode, I thought we would take a quick break from exploring all the brand new features in the Nether update and instead, I figured we would take a look at what the 1.16 update has done to our farms. Specifically, a couple of farms that I want to check in on to see if they are still functional. And one of them I'm fairly certain is not going to be. The other one is a little bit less functional, but we can make some changes to both of these farms, which will hopefully render them operational with minimal changes. I say minimal changes. One of them is going to require replacing a lot of blocks. The other one, less so. And I think you guys can probably guess which ones those are. We're going to be taking a lot of magma blocks, and I will need to go and harvest a lot of magma blocks. We're going to be taking those to the zombie pigman farm, or the zombified piglin farm, as I guess it now is. And we're going to be making some changes to the spawning pads up there. Because if you are at all familiar with the changes in 1.16, I've pointed this out a couple of times myself, you will notice that piglins are now spawning up here, because piglins and zombie pigmen spawn in basically the same places. You'll find them roaming the nether waste. Excuse you, get down into the... Uh, there we go. <laughs> he has fallen to his death already. Same with that guy who was just, I guess casually exploring um these piglins will actually spawn basically anywhere that zombie pigmen will and so they start to spawn on these pads up here. However, there is a unique difference, which I guess I could have demonstrated with those two piglins. Kind of a shame that I didn't really. Uh, there is a unique difference between piglins and zombified piglins, and that is that the zombified piglins are immune to fire damage and the regular piglins are not. So if we can find a regular piglin amongst all of these zombified dudes, I will see if we can try this out in theory. But basically, the theory here is that zombified piglins will be able to spawn on magma blocks, but the regular piglins will not. So all we need to do is replace all four layers of my farm here with magma blocks, and the farm should work a treat without worrying too much about the regular piglins. Let's see if we can track one down. Maybe I will need to despawn these guys and then come back, because it looks like they're already taking up the mob cap in their large numbers. Okay, yep, looks like we've got a couple of piglins up here, and for those of you who are eagle-eyed, you will notice my armor rate has already changed. I have got my gold helmet on, so these guys should not really be taking an interest in me, and I think what I will do is take out these blocks here and see if I can convince these guys to walk on top of them. Nope, looks like they're already walking away. Well, fair enough. I'll just keep replacing magma blocks around them until they have no choice. One other thing I've noticed about piglins is that they seem to have very little self-preservation instinct, and those guys just straight up fell down there when I created a hole for them to jump into. Maybe they're just pathfinding to the lower levels that way, I'm not entirely sure, but as you will hear, they are not too fond of the zombified pigmen, and they will definitely run away from them at a moment's notice. So maybe this guy over here is a, a good candidate. We can replace an area around him. And you'll notice that he's actually avoiding running over the magma blocks at this point. Even if I'm able to surround him with them, he just ran onto the glass instead, which is definitely not their preferred way of pathfinding. This guy is just being chased around by all of these zombie pigmen, and that's a real, real shame for him. So as you can see from this example, this piglin wants to pathfind around, but he's not stepping onto the magma blocks at all, which is usually a sign that mobs are trying to avoid taking damage. And if he wanders over here and I can nudge him a little bit, then maybe I'll be able to nudge him. Nope, <laughs> he's getting scared by the zombie pigmen, but will not run on the magma blocks, which means, yep, he is definitely going to take damage. Let's see if I can try and push him onto the magma block a little bit. <laughs> he's definitely struggling to get away from these zombie pigmen. You know what? I've had enough messing around. I'm just going to set him on fire. So there we go. <laughs> as you'll see, he's taking fire damage. Thankfully, they do not take this as an aggressive action on the part of the player because as far as they're concerned, they have just walked into a block that had fire on it. But if I do the same thing for this zombie pigman, for example, take a little bit of damage on the magma blocks myself, you'll notice that he takes no damage whatsoever, meaning that he is immune to fire damage as a denizen of the nether and zombie pigmen are immune while regular piglins are not. So we should be able to take them out using fire damage and they will not choose to spawn on magma blocks at all. That is that point proven. Now we can go ahead and collect up as many magma blocks as I care to find and replace the entirety of all four of these spawning platforms with magma blocks. 
which is going to be one heck of a job and potentially something I will either have to do systematically or using Frostwalker boots because Frostwalker boots make you immune to taking damage from magma blocks, which is a very useful thing to know when you have to create an entire platform of them. So if you're planning on designing this zombie pigman farm from scratch in 1.16, you might want to consider investing in some Frostwalker boots before you do. Either that or get very used to holding the crouch button. Luckily for me, some very close by chunks of my old nether actually have a lot of magma just kind of sitting here on the surface. A lot of the time you'll find it spawning near lava lakes, which obviously this patch is, but it does go inland a little way. And I've got a fire resistance potion handy if I need it, but thankfully this is going to be just fine. And I have swapped out for my diamond frostwalker boots instead of the regular netherite boots so that I can walk on this stuff without having to worry too much. I've also got the gold helmet nearby just in case any piglins decide to spawn out here but for the most part things are relatively quiet in this section of the nether. There's so much else going on elsewhere that it's kind of nice to have some peace and quiet here in the nether wastes. Now as I did mention a couple of episodes ago it is true that Mojang has said these zombie pigman farms are not going to last forever in their current state in that uh, the zombie pigmen actually giving you XP and player kill drops when they are just aggroed and they aren't killed by a player is actually a bug that they are planning on fixing at some point in the near future. And at that point, all we should need to do is adapt the farms so that all of the pigmen are funneled into one place where we can just swing at them with a sword and kill them. It's not going to be as big of a deal as it really sounds, because while it's nice to AFK at these things, all you really need to do is install some sort of macro that auto clicks for you and your problem is solved right there. You just get to kill the pigmen over and over again, and the fact that they now aggro even better than they did before when they respawn means that you actually have a better chance of farming the pigmen over and over instead of just leaving it and coming back to a bunch of pigmen who don't care about you. So between that and the fix that we're applying to this farm today, the future of these zombified piglin farms is actually looking pretty bright. We're not going to have to worry about them being completely useless. In fact, they should continue to be as useful as they've ever been. A decent source of gold, which is now obviously abundant in the nether in many other ways, but they will also still be a good source of experience for a good long time to come. So with all that said, we are getting a decent supply of magma blocks here. I've almost filled up one shulker box just with the pockets I could see and we can still grab a little bit more from below the surface here as well. So I'm going to get the rest of this done off camera and I'll see you guys on the other side for a time lapse.
Hey folks, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the time lapse. This whole thing looks pretty incredible from the outside now, to be honest. It looks like some sort of giant, like, heat coil or something like that. Some sort of thermal coil. And now, as you will see, we only have zombie pigmen spawning on these platforms. Zombified piglins, whatever you want to call them, they are here in large numbers. And as you saw from the end of that time lapse, this farm is incredibly effective now. Not only do the pigmen just kind of aggro automatically from every side, the new ones spawn fresh as well and nothing else will spawn here. This also gets rid of the problem of zombie chicken jockeys coming into the system, so we don't no longer need to worry about chicken and feathers ending up in the system here. Maybe the occasional one might escape the magma block spawning pads just out of natural pathfinding, but I have a feeling that for the most part we are not really going to see them because they will st start to take damage as soon as they spawn. But they are the only thing that is going to spawn on these magma blocks which is unable to survive there. The rest is all going to be zombified piglins who will make their way into the minecarts on either side and drop their XP. And the XP is actually coming in sometimes faster than I can collect it. Right now I'm having to crouch just so all the XP orbs make their way under these slabs, so we might be able to do something about that a little later, but I think this whole farm is working 100% better now. And as you can see, when those guys freshly spawned in, they immediately took up the aggro again. Occasionally, one will get stuck on this platform up here, unable to pathfind down for some reason, but that is incredibly rare, and oftentimes, other piglins will spawn behind it and just push them off in the attempt to get to me. So this farm now works perpetually. I could go AFK overnight and still come back to gaining XP. And as you can see, I have myself nearly 90 levels. There we go, we are just cresting over the hump of 90 levels. Amazing stuff. So happy that this farm works even better in this update. And as I said, it's just gonna be a simple case of making sure we have a single kill area where we can just swipe at them with a sword once the aggro bug gets fixed and they no longer drop XP just by dying from any other source, and that's going to be a, a weird time. It's going to be strange to adjust to that kind of stuff, but ultimately it's going to be very, very doable and nothing to worry about as far as the future of these gold farms goes. So it's a little strange right now because the only way to actually switch this farm off is just to leave entirely and hope that the zombie pigmen lose aggro by the time you return. And as you probably saw in that video in the time lapse briefly, uh, it was very difficult to do that if you were staying in the nether. I have found that the best way to make sure that they drop their aggro and are no longer interested in you when you return to the farm is to make sure that you've like logged out of your single player world and you've done that a decent distance away because every time I logged back in or every time I sort of went away and came back they were still aggro at me thanks to the fact that those zombie pigmen around the outside on those platforms are still there and still remember you. They don't despawn because they are name tagged, you probably remember that from the previous episodes we did on this farm but yeah it's a little bit worrying when they just don't stop aggroing on you and you still need to build out half of the platforms. So I would say that took about one shulker box of magma blocks per platform. I did gather more than I needed, thankfully, which was a very good thing because I didn't want to stop the time lapse halfway through and end up to going and mining more. However, these guys are a bit of a problem when it comes to accessing shulker boxes full of materials because anytime you end up looking in the box, <laughs> they start to aggro on you because they think you're stealing from them, <laughs> despite the fact that shulker boxes definitely do not spawn in any kind of piglin structures. So, yeah, kind of hilarious that you ended up having to avoid piglin attacks just for replacing the entire platform with magma blocks but sooner or later that stops becoming a problem because the piglins stop spawning there and i think that's where we're going to leave it for that farm having proven that zombie pigmen can now spawn on mass and we don't need to worry about the piglin problem now we can move on to another farm whose fate is going to be a little more uncertain and i'm talking about this farm out here you may recognize this or you may not but this is my creeper farm and previously this has been providing me with a decent amount of gunpowder and a little bit of string on the side thanks to the fact that this farm is powered by wither roses basically areas of wither roses completely wall to wall inside of there result in creepers spawning and immediately taking damage thanks to the wither rose effect spiders do the same they all end up dying and all of their drops end up getting collected by a hopper minecart system which transfers everything downwards into a system of pipes that transports it to the shore over here and as you can see this farm has been fairly productive in the past i've taken basically all of the gunpowder out of it anytime i have used it because that has been a decent source of 
gunpowder for fireworks, and I occasionally use it for TNT as well. However, we have a problem with this farm because the 1.16 update has made it impossible for mobs to spawn inside Wither Roses. So the idea here was that mobs should not be able to spawn inside of Wither Roses, immediately start taking damage and end up dying without any kind of input from the player or any kind of like clever system that flushed them into a certain area or anything like that. It seemed too easy. It seemed a little bit like an exploit. And so Mojang has decided that the only mobs that are able to spawn inside of a full field of Wither Roses are those which are not affected by the Wither effect, which means Wither Skeletons, which actually means that our Wither Skeleton farm may have increased in productivity over the last little while when the update dropped, but I have a feeling creeper farms like this are not really going to be able to sustain a model like that where a full field of Wither Roses is present because the creepers just aren't going to be able to spawn. However, having done a little bit of testing with this in my creative world, I have come upon a really interesting solution, and it really just involves alternating Wither Roses on every other block and making sure there is a checkerboard pattern of Wither Roses. And this changes a couple of things about the farm. First of all, creepers will not be able to pack spawn in the farm if you end up with a checkerboard like this because they'll be able to spawn on one block but maybe not on the next block over in a, any kind of uh, lateral sense. They might be able to spawn pack spawn diagonally but I don't think they will end up spawning on blocks next to each other because the Wither Roses will block them from appearing there. So pack spawning may be reduced by this. That is a bit of a side effect of the farm. However, we do end up with another useful side effect in that spiders will no longer decide to spawn here because the Wither Roses are blocking their spawnable area. Spiders need, I think, a 3x3 area to be clear in order to spawn. It may be a 2x2 area and it will not spawn them inside of an area that contains a checkerboard of Wither Roses like this. So by alternating the Wither Roses in this pattern, we end up with a farm that you can actually still spawn creepers in. And if you AFK between 24 and 32 blocks away from the farm, the creeper's natural pathfinding will still take them through the Wither Roses. It's not like the piglins where they try and avoid stepping on the magma blocks. Creepers will actually walk through Wither Roses and unintentionally start to take damage, which ends up leading to them dying in the way that they would in the farm previously. It is not as fast, but it is still a viable farm design. And so instead of tearing down this entire farm, we will probably build a more effective creeper farm somewhere else another time. But in the meantime, we can keep this farm running simply by alternating the Wither Roses inside of there instead of providing a full field of them. Now, of course, this means a couple of other things need to happen inside this farm because previously we relied on being able to AFK 128 blocks above any other spawnable space, leaving the farm as the only spawnable space. Whereas if we're relying on Creeper's pathfinding, mob pathfinding gets sort of disabled outside of a certain radius, that being the 32 block radius I spoke about earlier. So if we end up AFKing as high as we used to to avoid mobs spawning anywhere else around here, we are going to find that the creepers don't pathfind into the Wither Roses at all and will not end up taking damage. Which means for this farm to be a viable design, we really need to do a little bit more lighting up of caves in this area and making sure that any other spawnable space is no longer present, which is going to be a little bit tricky considering the drowned are potentially going to be around here and also because there are a lot of caves in this area. But hopefully, if we end up AFKing 24 blocks high in this area, we will end up with a decent amount of stuff still spawning and dying inside the farm. Not only that, but if you built something like this in the air, you could pretty much be guaranteed of this farm still working. Of course, you have to take into account the fact that up higher in the world, you will get slightly fewer spawns. The spawn rate will be less efficient because it works better lower down in the world. But it should really not be all that much of a difference building it at sea level versus building it in the air, and you're going to be avoiding all of the mobs spawning in caves underground. So I'll see how this goes in the meantime. We'll briefly take... Oh, you can hear that there. A creeper is getting hurt in the farm already. So that, if nothing else, should be proof enough that this is working for us. Let's go and check the gunpowder levels in this chest while we can and take out any gunpowder that's in there and then I'll do a quick AFK session, see how much we can end up producing and hopefully we end up with a decent amount of gunpowder left in here proving that the farm is still sort of viable in 1.16. So there's no gunpowder left in either of these chests. These chests will filter down into those ones. So hopefully with a little bit of AFK time we should find that we get a fair amount of gunpowder from this. 
Hey folks, welcome back. So I've been AFK for about half an hour, about as long as it took to edit the rest of that video together. I set myself up a little AFK station, removed the rest of the scaffolding. I still need to get rid of that bit up there in the sky. But I went in with my camera account briefly while I started the AFK session. And as you can see, creepers and spiders are still spawning in this farm. And I'm very surprised by the presence of spiders. I honestly thought that Wither Roses were going to block them from spawning entirely. It seems to be the case that they check that there is a flat surface for spiders to spawn on unobstructed, and then the next check the game does is for whether or not the flowers and stuff are present, but it is still decided to spawn spiders at that point. Therefore, we are not eliminating spiders from this farm at all. I don't know why I didn't see any in testing, but for whatever reason, the spiders seem to elude me. Anyway, they don't need to worry about pathfinding around because they will just die automatically anyway because of the size of their hitbox intersecting a wither rose basically anyway they spawn in there so they are less of a problem the creepers are going to die a little bit slower but the spiders are going to remove themselves from the farm immediately allowing for more spawns and hopefully more creeper spawns let's see what we've got in here okay 28 gunpowder in that chest and a stack and a, you know most of the way to a second stack that is not too bad for half an hour. Again, this is not going to be the most viable farm design. There are going to be much more efficient farms you could build. To be honest, there were probably much more efficient farms you could build before the 1.16 update. But what I have proved here is that even when mechanics like that change, you can still adapt your previous builds without having to completely redesign your creeper farms. You can still use something similar enough to the old design. It took me two minutes to swap out the Wither Rose floors in there for alternating Wither Rose floors. And instead of having a broken farm, what I got was a farm that still produces two stacks of gunpowder within half an hour, which is not terrible, to be honest. I think adaptation is one of the most important skills you can learn in Minecraft because the game is constantly changing. Every update adds new mechanics, changes old mechanics, and sometimes it can feel like the one thing you relied on as a farm mechanic previously has just broken. And that is not always the case. Sometimes it is simply the case that you need to adapt whatever you were doing before. And I think this is a really valuable lesson to learn. And as we go into the 1.16 update, we are probably going to find even more ways in which we can improve farms like this, we can change farms like this, and yes, I will probably end up building an even more efficient creeper farm following a different design. But for now, this creeper farm that I spent so much time working on in previous updates is still there. We don't need to tear it down, it is still gonna be functioning as a creeper farm and will be providing us with gunpowder for a little while to come. So I hope that's an important lesson to you guys that adaptation is really worth it in this game. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on the episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I will see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.